it's time to take that design that I made last week, which you can see right here, and start coding this bad boy up. Hi, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Now last week I made this design here as part of a challenge to myself. And while I thought it was a really cool challenge, where what I'm doing is taking designing something one week and then coding it up the next week. And that was a big part of the challenge for me was being able to do it in two videos, and I've already failed at that challenge. <laughs> um, I started writing the code for this, I didn't even get close to being done, and I was over two hours in. So <laughs> I'm not going to be making like a five hour long video. Uh, you guys were just going to zone out, it's not going to work, and on my part it's just taking way too much time. So I'm going to have to break this up into multiple pieces. So it is being broken up into parts, and this part is me setting things up and writing the markup. And the reason that we need to set things up is I'm going to be using SAS to style all of this up. Now wait, 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 before you go running off, you heard SAS and you're, you're like, nope, not for me. Um, I'm keeping this as simple as possible. There's no command line, there's no extra software to install. It's going to be done as the lowest barrier of entry possible. And I'm using SAS because you voted for it. Now maybe not you specifically, but the channel and the community voted for SAS to be the language of choice and so I'm going to stick with that. And also when I'm in the SAS side of things, I'm not going to be doing anything crazy, weird, or things that don't look familiar at all, um, just because I don't want to scare people off. And I also want to show people how awesome SAS can be. There was enough people who voted no to SAS um, that I think it's important to show that why people like SAS and all of that. So I'm going to show off all the good stuff about it without scaring you off. And it's part of the reason I think the video started taking so long to create is because I was going into the explanations on a lot of these things as I was going. So yeah, this video really is just the markup and setting things up and the setup, as I said, is getting SAS ready to go, even though we're not going to write any SAS yet, but without having to open up the terminal, do some command line stuff or anything like that, or any extra software. You can do it all with what you already have. So let's get this party started. So I will be using VS Code to do this. I'm going to be using a little bit of CSS Grid, some Flexbox, and all of that fun stuff, and a very small amount of JavaScript. And as I already said, I will be using SAS. Now one thing to make this SAS a little bit easier for everybody to follow along with, if you're not somebody who's used SAS before, instead of having to go to the command line and sort of create a barrier of entry, one thing you can do, uh, and I'm going to be using this extension, so if I go and I look at my extensions here, um, in my enabled ones, Let's just scroll that down a bit. Um, I do have live SAS compiler. So you can install this into VS Code. And if you're using something like Sublime or Atom, uh, you'll be able to find pretty much the same thing. Um, what live SAS compiler does is it will compile your SAS as you go. It's really easy. I'm going to show you once I start writing some SAS how to, how to enable it. It's just a single click. Um, and with this also comes a live server. So you, all of it inside of VS Code. You don't have to go into the command line. You don't have to do anything else. It also comes with an auto prefixer. Um, it's pretty neat actually. So it just sort of takes some of the barrier of entry into SAS away. So. Um, if you're not used to SAS, this might be a nice easy way to get it is this live SAS compiler here in VS Code or whatever, ver you know, there, again, there's other ones like this that work in other, brow um, other text editors. Um, so let's close that down and we're going to do a little bit of file organization here. So I'm only going to have one, uh, we're going to have my index.html, there's only one in here. Um, if you're using VS Code, you have Emmet already. If you don't have VM, VS Code, I'd encourage you as an extension or plugin or whatever it is to get that. Um, you can just type exclamation mark, hit tab, and it's going to give you a nice little sort of starting point for your HTML here. Um, going back to my files here and just adding in a few new things that we're going to need, I will need... I'm going to make a SCSS folder because I will be writing SCSS, not um, the SAS syntax. So this is sassy CSS. It's going to look a lot more familiar to you if you're used to CSS and not SAS. So that will make it a little bit easier as well. Um, so in my SCSS folder here, I'm going to create three more folders. I'm going to create one called abstracts, and I'm going to explain how I use these all in a second. Uh, I'm also going to create another folder called base. 
and I'm also going to create another folder called layout. Now when you're doing your organization of your SAS in general, we split things up into different folders. Um, it just lets you be a little bit more organized with your um, with your code and it makes it a little bit easier once you get used to the systems. If you look up something, you'll find the 7.1 system. It's a really cool um, system where you can find out more on that, um, where you end up with a lot more folders. But this is a pretty simple site. I think these are the only ones we're going to need. Um, I'm gonna make one more file here, and this file is just gonna be called main.scss. This could be styles.scss or style or anything like that. Um, I don't want it in my abstracts. I want that to be, there we go, in my just uh, SCSS folder here. So I, in my SCSS folder, I have my abstracts, my base, my layout folders, and then I have a main.scss folder where I'm going to import everything, and this is what's going to get compiled into some regular CSS once the time comes for that. Um, now what we can do actually is we can come down to here where I have this watch SAS little button on here. So this is what the extension has added in. So I can click on watch SAS and it says working on it. And now it's watching and I can also come here and click on go live and um, what the go live is going to do is it launches my live server here so I can actually see uh, my document. So if I come to my index here and I just type hello world and hit save as soon as i hit save you can see that that text is automatically come in here uh, which is really nice and cool so nice thing there um, this is popped up i can just hit the little x here and hide it back away um so i am going to be using typekit for my fonts here um, but for the moment let's just bring this back up and move it over because i don't need to i also don't need my assets right now um, I'm going to start writing the markup for this. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I just have this little thing right here. And I also, it has this sort of bar that goes across the top, which I have a border on, which I shouldn't have. Um, I'm just thinking, should these be part of the same thing or not? They probably could be. Um, let's say we do nav. Uh, actually, let's undo that for a second. I'm going to be using a little bit of Emmet here. I want to have to speed this up. I need to get it done within a short amount of time. So I'm going to do nav, and then I'm going to do a uh, greater than, and inside my nav, I'm going to have a ul, and inside of my ul, I'm going to have an li, and I'm going to have four of those. So I do a star four, and this is all Emmet. So I'll put a link down to Emmet before, uh, below if you've never used it before. So nav, ul, li, four li's, and inside all of those li's, I need a link. And now I'm gonna push tab on my keyboard and that is nice and handy. So, um, now I sped all that up well, just to fill all this in and I think I'm gonna be doing that quite a lot. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing the, uh, I'm gonna take my time to explain a little bit of how I'm approaching things and then as I'm filling it out and copying and pasting and text and all the boring stuff, then um, I'll speed that up just so we're not spending too much time looking at that nonsense when it's not very educational seeing me copy and paste. And um, the next thing I want is my section. Let's do section dot, so a bit more Emmet here, uh, section dot intro. Um, and in my section intro, I need to have my logo. So I'm going to put in, do this as an image for now. I'm gonna be doing this as an inline SVG, um, but I'm just gonna put image for now. We can do SVG, I guess. Um, SVG plus dot logo plus. I'm just trying to think if I need a container, but I can use grid to set that up. It's all going to be the same, but it's sort of. Anyway, we'll see. I think I know how I'm going to do that. Um, logo, and then so then I'm going to have a paragraph called intro text. And that should be a double underscore. And whoops, if you. There we go. Um, I think that's all I need there. So for my SVG here, um, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to come back and talk about that in a second. Let's. I have word wrap off. If you are using VS Code, Alt Z. I don't know what it is on a Mac. I apologize. If it's Alt, it might be Option. Um, you can go back and forth between um, word wrap or no word wrap. Okay, so the next one here is the beer. So this is gonna be the more interesting one. So uh, I'm probably gonna have some changes on here. So I'm gonna do section.beer. 
I should have an ID on this too. I'll come back and do my IDs. So this one is going to be a bit more of the regular section we're gonna have, right? The beer. So I'm gonna have my H2, H2, uh, which will be a section title. Plus I'll do a P of section subtitle. Plus I'm gonna do a paragraph that's just a regular paragraph, so I'm going to leave that just like that. Oh, that came out of this picture. Whoopsie doodles. Um, paragraph. Now, I need to have my carousel slider-y thing here. So let's just do a div of, I'm going to call it grid carousel. So I'm going to use grid to do it. So in here, I'm going to have my five images. Do I need each image? Um, so yeah, I have my carousel, which is all of this. So the carousel is this thing that's going to cycle around. So inside my carousel, I'm going to do a figure. And the reason I have a figure is I have an image with a description of that image. So this, this text here is linked directly to the image. So it's describing the image. So I'm doing it as a figure because that's how I understand how figures should work and uh, sort of the purpose of them. There's, um, I have my image, which is pretty straightforward. And I have my caption. So the caption is the text that is related to that image. There's the title and a couple of paragraphs or take on a classic style. There we go. Um, and now what I can do is I can just copy this whole figure a few times. But to make your life a little bit easier, what I'd say is carousel item 01. Just to make it a little bit easier when you're scrolling up and down to be able to see where you're at. Four, three, two. And for my images, uh, I never, oh, I should have put it anyway. Okay, I can do all these at once. I'm just gonna control click on inside of each one of these. If you're on a Mac, it'd be command click. And my uh, SRC, almost put an href there would be uh, images slash is it beer 01.jpg I believe so I'm going to save that and let's just see if this is working at all my images aren't working what did I call the images uh, images oh no zero and there we go, I have all of those. I'm gonna update all this text uh, off camera after just so it goes a bit better with the pictures, but my pictures are there, sweet. So let's come in now and my next section. So we'll go back to XD. Um, the next section here is the mission. So let's do section mission inside of here. Now this is where it's interesting because I am sort of having these repeating elements, but this one has a dark background and this one has a light background on it. Um, they both have buttons in them, but all three buttons are a little bit different. I also have a button down here. So I want a lot of different components here that can repeat themselves. So I think what I'm gonna do is card. Um, it's not really your classic type of card, but it's still sort of like a card, a little info card. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call it card. We're gonna do card. Uh, Card, card, dark. Yep. Inside there, we'll have my H2 of a section title. Whoops, section, I think I did that section title. Plus a paragraph of section, did I do a double underscore? I just wanna make sure it's the same as my, I did a double underscore for section, that's fine. Um, I might fix this up at two actually, section, and section subtitle plus a paragraph plus an a dot btn button button sure think light dark transparent sure light okay and then we also need my image now the question I did card dark I'm just trying to think does this image go in no because this one that needs to go below it. 
So here, what we're gonna have to do is uh, my image. In this, if I'm laying this all out with grid, I'm gonna call it image. It's gonna be easy. I, I'm trying to think if I should just call, come up with like a front and a back class front. And this is gonna get also on here a back class. I think this is gonna work. I think this is gonna work. Uh, my image is images slash mission. Man smiling while working at Rory. Alrighty. I think that's all. I uh, just have to bring the text in and everything. All right, so now the this next one, I just re I'm gonna do something here. I'm also gonna do um, I'm gonna do this on all my sections. That's my figure. Do, 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 do. Section beer, section intro. I'm gonna call give all these as a class of section, and then section hyphen hyphen intro. Just realized I haven't talked about the hyphen hyphen or underscore underscore. If you've been following me, you know that I sort of follow Bem, not a hundred percent, but I'm in the 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 realm of Bem. Um, so if you don't know how that works, if it's, here's like a regular section, and then this is a section modifier. So the double hyphen means I'm modifying it. I'm not sure if all of these will actually need the modification on them, but some of them might. So that's why I'm going to put that there for now. Um, and then if it's a double underscore like this, it's a, like part of this component. So I have my grid carousel, and then this lives inside of that. And uh, SAS is going to make it really easy to do this. We don't actually have to write this out every single time because SAS nesting is amazing. All right, so we have uh, that done. Now we can move on to this next section here. So section will be section, section brewery. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll do an H2 of uh, section title plus our paragraph of section subtitle. And in this case, two paragraphs and a dot button dot button light. Uh, so this one's really, really straightforward. Just I have my H2 and then three paragraphs. One of them is my subtitle uh, and then my next two paragraphs and then just my simple button down there at the end. And we're almost down at the bottom now. Here is going to be really similar to this one. I'm actually, I think, going to copy this and paste it in. Section, this instead of section mission will be tap room. Card, I'm going to do light or white card. That I have back. Oh, that was back front. This card is in front of uh, the image. So this bad. This image. I don't even know if I need back. I'm not sure if back is um, going to be useful. Where's my front? Uh, this must have my class on it. I don't know if I need this back class to be honest. I could probably just use a front class, but we'll leave it there for now since we already used it. Um. This one actually needs two buttons, so we'll copy that. What's on tap and opening hours? We'll go with button white instead of button transparent, I think, uh, just because it's faster to, to, to type up. One thing you'll notice is this is on the left and this one's on the right. For the moment, I've left everything the same. I am going to be laying this out with CSS Grid. I'm not sure if I need to change it. Or I know I don't have to change it, so I might just use some ordering um, to play around with that. I might come back in to add some classes on here later, but I think we'll leave it just like that. Um, and now we can come up to my footer. And this I can all... Um, for my footer... It's nice and easy. The only thing in here will be uh, my SVG. So I'm just going to do SVG and leave it. Whoops. I'll just do an SVG in here and leave it blank um, for the moment. And because I have a little bit of text after that, 
that I forget what I wrote. And we have two lines, copy right. That's not right, copyright 2018. No one caught that on my last video since I, <laughs> I made this copyright 2018 and uh, des design by Kevin Powell. If you wanna go ahead and, you know, if you do this and, and do whatever, you, you can you can take that off or do what you want with it. I just wanted something to put in there. Um, all of this is open and free for you to use however you want. I don't have a copyright on this. Or if I do, I just threw it out the window. I don't want it. I want you guys to play around with this and have fun with it. And if you can use it in a fun way, um, by all means. And originally I wanted this to sort of stretch out. So I'm gonna do that. I want that to touch the side there. Awesome, so that is the markup done. So I'm gonna hit save on that and just double check that everything is looking okay here. Um, so far so good, all the way down. Awesome, um, For let's uh, go and bring in my SVG just so I have something in there. So if I come into my images here, cause I want this as an inline one. If I click here on logo, um, I get all my SVGs, and if you don't know about using inline SVGs or just in SVGs in general, um, you can check out my series on that where I look into those. Um, so here I'm going to just take all this, copy it, and head on over uh, to here where I want it, and I want it right here. So where I had my SVG there, I'm gonna just hit paste, and it's kind of annoying that it takes up a lot of room. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ID on here to a class and I'm going to change, I'm going to do logo and logo, uh, we'll call it just white. And all I'm going to do is minimize that down. So I'm just going to click there so it's not taking up too much room. Actually copy this one that we already have and come all the way down to here and paste it in. And this one will be logo light because the, the one on that one has a little bit of a different color. Um, so we'll be able to control the color of it just through um, our classes here. And I'm just gonna hit save on that, and if I scroll down, oh, we won't see it, my logo's white. <laughs> uh, can I do it on here just really fast? Isolate, isolate, do I have any colors on there? Fills, fills, FFF, let's just change this to red. Uh, red like that red like this just really quick so you can see There we go. You can see that the SVG is uh, coming in there Turn that back to white though because we don't want it to be red uh, Awesome uh, I don't want that I want my SVG to be smaller so it's not getting in the way and So that's it all done with the markup now We can start writing some sass if you're watching these videos as they come out, you're going to have to wait a whole week until we get into that though. But if you're watching this in the future, then you can just binge watch all of these and be done with them all in one shot. Now before you run off, I just want to say if you're new to SAS or you've started playing with SAS but you're not super comfortable with it yet and you want to learn more about it, um, I've started actually developing a course for SAS and it's not quite done yet, but it's getting really, really close and I'm really excited about that. Um, so if you think you'd like to know more about SAS or if you know nothing about it, but this is, well, this video may not have piqued your interest too much, but the next ones might, um, you can go uh, look down in the bottom below. You'll see a link in the description about my SAS course. It's not ready yet, but if you um, sign up there for updates, you'll be one of the first to know when it actually finally does launch, which should not be too long from now. And it's something that I've been working at for a really long time and I'm really excited about so you can go and check that out. And with that, a big thank you. Just thank you for watching this and uh, thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. If you have any questions, any comments, if you have any future video topic ideas, anything like that, please leave a comment down below and let me know about it. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.